Follow me at twitch.tv slash jsolari. We have all kinds of fun there. And pretty soon we're going to be doing a baking stream where I'm going to be making chocolate chip muffins and doing a speed run of chocolate chip cookies. Should be fun. Go follow. I stream every Tuesday. Go. Have you ever noticed how much anime is based around high schoolers? You probably have, but may not have really thought about it. But yeah, there's a lot. Like, a lot. By which I mean most anime revolves around a cast of high school students and sometimes middle school students. There's a lot of different forms of media produced from all corners of the world that revolves around the stories of teenagers. The US in particular has created hundreds of movies and TV shows that take place in high school, spanning across all genres such as comedy, rom-com, drama, horror, uh, vampires, fancy, and more. Some of them have become timeless classics, others belong in a dumpster. Clearly there's some appeal to stories that take place in our adolescent years. It's a time in our lives where our childhoods are fading into the background and adulthood is approaching swiftly with all of its complications in tow. Something that's made all the more difficult to contend with when you're dealing with the whirlwind of puberty and the tsunami of hormones that are hell-bent on ruining your life by giving you all of these horrible emotions and enough excess body hair to make Bigfoot jealous. Gym class was not an easy time. It is a difficult time to say the least. Teenagers not only have to study hard to have even a slight chance at a well-paying and hopefully gratifying future career, but they also have to navigate the minefield of friendships, romance, and where they as human beings fit into the world. These stories we see often reflect our experiences where we wonder, can I be part of the popular group? Am I a nerd? Am I a loser? Will the goths have me if I need a backup plan? If so, could I pull off a look like Robert Smith from The Cure? How will I explain all this lipstick to my parents? Why can't I stop sweating? These factors and many more are the reasons why your high school years are a time for transformation. The stories we see are a way for us to reflect upon our own experiences and it can be easy for us to see ourselves in these characters or possibly see a version of ourselves that we wish that we could be during that time in our life. The high school experience is something pretty much all of us can identify with in some shape or form, but anime and manga writers choose it as a setting more so than any other medium, spanning across all sorts of genres from slice-of-life comedies to horror. Even though some of them look like they've been bench-pressing 250 pounds since they were a toddler, there are numerous reasons why the lives of teenagers are so interesting to audiences across all age groups. It's a fascinating time in our lives. Adults who have lived the experience can look back and take inventory of their fond or maybe painful memories, whereas teenagers get to see the experiences of others and weigh it against their own, perhaps to see an idealized version of their life or gain some appreciation for what they have since things could be worse. Like if you have a bunch of demons to deal with or a serial killer with weird powers, normal things. For better or worse, we're conditioned by the media and our elders to recognize adolescence as our salad days. That is a deep cut Shakespeare reference for you. Our teenage years are kind of a weird contradiction. It's a time in our lives where we were at our most awkward and confused. You make a ton of mistakes, there's stress from trying to perform well at school, you're broke but you crave independence from your parents, no one takes you seriously, and even though you've been told time and time again that these are the best times of your life, it doesn't always feel that way, and you want nothing more than to enjoy the benefits adults have because you feel like you're ready for it. You might also have been one of those kids that leaves comments on songs from the 90s and 2000s on YouTube like everyone at my school listens to singers like Taylor Swift and BTS but here I am listening to real music. I was born in the wrong generation. Jesus Christ. So bad. You're told that you need to worry about the future. Decide on the kind of person that you want to be and the kind of work that you want to do for the rest of your life. A truly terrifying prospect at any age, but made even harder when you're dealing with the miasma of teenage feelings. This is me when I was a teen. 
Look at that and tell me that's a guy who knows what's best for his future. Oh, young Solari. Stay away from YouTube and get your ADHD diagnosis earlier. The funny thing is though that despite all of its complications, most of us look back on our teenage years with some level of fondness and recognize it as the last time in our life where outside of education, we had an amount of freedom that we would kill for in adulthood. But in general, the teenage experience is looked at with reverence by those of us who have entered adulthood. There were no nine hour work days, we were learning new things in a structured environment, something which we definitely took for granted. We were fitter, had more energy, friends were more readily available to hang out with, holidays were long, you didn't have to worry about bills, taxes or rent, your parents looked after the house while you threw your clothes on the ground and wasted questionable amounts of tissues and took really long showers. They knew what you were doing. The days felt longer, the summers were kinder, you could waste your time playing video games all day without any guilt attached, and now in your adulthood where you wake up with an aching back most mornings and dread opening every letter with a clear window that arrives in your mailbox, it's no surprise that you end up thinking to yourself, God, I really didn't know how good I had it. Anime often mirrors our complicated teenage years, usually through the lens of the fantastical. There's the slice of life genre, which in general tends to be more true to reality, with regular teens doing regular things like hanging out, doing stupid things, and getting on with school life. But sometimes you'll also get something like a romance storyline thrown into the mix, with all the complications that come with it. These romances aren't always handled well, and you end up getting 24 episodes of characters frustratingly avoiding sharing their feelings, even when it's blindingly obvious that there's something between them. But I guess being a little green when it comes to love is part of being a teenager. These stories are usually quite idyllic, skipping over the dozens of hours spent studying each week and the toll that that takes. The Japanese education system is notoriously grueling. Students are encouraged to consider which university they want to go to from as early as 14 years old and face intense pressure to excel academically from parents, teachers and society at large. Education in Japan has had a great deal of importance placed on it, placing a colossal amount of pressure on teenagers, which has led to a disturbing increase in depression, with nearly a third of high school students having moderate to severe symptoms. Pair all this with the anxieties of the future, isolation, bullying, and other problems students may face in the school environment, it's safe to say that anime isn't the most accurate representation of school life. That I believe is kind of the point behind anime shows based around teens in high school, especially for teens in Japan. It offers an idealized version of the high school experience, lots of spare time, a large circle of friends, fun antics, romance, and an overall greater degree of freedom that they're not afforded in reality. In some cases where there's a male protagonist, male viewers have a surrogate in which they can envision a school life where they're surrounded by cute girls. Compared to the West, although Japanese teenagers are under intense pressure to perform in high school, they're afforded a certain amount of extra autonomy compared to some other cultures. Their parents trust them to care for themselves, they're allowed to travel and spend without supervision, and due to the extensive work hours in the country, many are expected to prepare their own meals along with doing other household chores. This lifestyle is portrayed to a certain extent in anime, albeit with greater liberties that make it seem more appealing. On the downside though, this lifestyle can result in children rarely seeing or spending time with their parents, but it gets much darker than that. Japan as a country may have a low crime rate, but there has been a long-standing issue with girls being coerced and sometimes forced into industries that sexualize them. This can involve something with a few more barriers in place, like working in a maid cafe, but the act of minors engaging in client-to-client -client sex work in Japan is so common that it's been deemed an epidemic. The autonomy that teens have, along with multiple industries that prey upon and are funded by the fetishization of minors, has created the conditions under which girls can be exploited for monetary gain by offering them promises of more autonomy, specifically financial freedom. 
And just to be clear, this is not a condemnation of sex work. It is a criticism of the exploitation of minors. Now, we're all guilty of enjoying content that caters to our fantasies in some way, and in general, there's nothing wrong with that. But given how much anime takes place in high school, it's fair to say that there's a substantial amount of demand for stories in such a specific setting. Studios that produce media do have some influence over what the market wants. They get a read for what audiences are interested in, which in this case is stories based around high schoolers, and attempt to meet and drive up that demand. So this is partly the responsibility of them. It's the same reason why $200 million blockbuster movies fill our movie theaters these days. Audiences want them and studios are simultaneously telling us that that's what we want. Given what we know about the Japanese education system though, and the stresses that come with it, it's safe to say that the popularity of this setting is driven by students' desire to enjoy the fantasy of a better school life. Something I feel I should mention though is that even though there is some assumptions that everyone in Japan watches anime, it's not quite true. Yes, anime is very popular there and a lucrative market, but less than half of the population watches it, and many teenagers claim that they don't watch anime because they simply don't have the time for it. Because of school. The fantasy of a better high school life comes in a variety of flavors, some stronger than others. There are hundreds of stories which involve teenagers gaining some form of magical power or otherwise, and sometimes being transported to another world, such as the popular genre isekai, which translates to, well, another world. In these stories, it's common to see outsider protagonists, usually men, gain these powers either through some mysterious force or it's something that they've inherited through a bloodline that they weren't aware of. When they gain these powers, it generally tends to be the case that it's exceptional and others claim that their strength is extraordinary for someone who's lacking in experience and as the story develops, part of their growth involves surpassing foes or rivals through struggle or awakening more dormant powers. In these stories, the fantasy is that a person who is considered unremarkable or a pariah from society or school gains recognition from their abilities. That there's something special about them that people haven't noticed, but now they have the opportunity not only to be recognized by others, but be relied upon by them, using their strength to defend them. The message here is a positive one, that if you have the ability to help others, then you should do so and if you have power, then you should use it responsibly. However, I believe that desire for recognition says something about the wants and needs of the people who enjoy these stories. Japanese society in general values conformity. If you're a regular person, then there's an expectation to fit in and not go against the grain, whether that's the workplace, in high school, or anywhere else. To illustrate this, about five years ago, an 18-year-old girl in Osaka sued the Osaka prefectural government after her school demanded that she dyed her naturally brown hair to black or face expulsion. After she dyed it, the school claimed that there were brown tinges and required her to dye it again, causing damage to her hair and leaving rashes on her scalp. A survey also found that almost 60% of high schools in Tokyo required students with lighter hair to provide proof that it's natural, like a photo of them when they were an infant. This is just one example of how citizens in Japan are required to conform, and believe me when I say that that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's an expectation that you need to put your head down, study, work, and take pride in being one of the cogs that keeps society moving. Don't stand out too much, don't complain, keep it to yourself, and don't colour outside the lines. Conformity can have some benefits to it, like a lower crime rate, but when people feel that it's more important to maintain the efficiency of the group, the well-being of individuals takes a back seat, which can lead to people feeling unfulfilled or left to struggle in silence. This mentality has led to a persistent growth in depression and other mental illnesses. Japan's healthcare system is woefully under-equipped to treat people with mental illnesses. And to make matters worse, there's a considerable amount of stigma towards those with mental illness, resulting in an estimated two-thirds of people suffering from mental illness, avoiding treatments, and instead relying on family for help. 
Japan as a country is not in a great place. I made a video about it a few years back if you're interested in learning more. And even though there's been some effort to make things better for its citizens, there is still plenty of work to be done to remedy the conflict between culture and the pressure to perform to a standard which society deems acceptable. The country's mental health epidemic could be a whole video unto itself, it's that bad, which I may cover someday. With such a strong emphasis on conformity, it's become more understandable that people may desire some ways in which they can at least fantasize about individuality, and anime gives them a window to that life, a chance to find a surrogate, which is more than likely why a lot of protagonists are close to being blank slates, and why many Japanese-produced RPGs have the playable main character remain voiceless, so you can fill in that void. As I've already said, media that caters to our fantasies can be a nice way to escape from the mundanity of life, and that's not always a bad thing. I believe though that the constant stream of anime and manga based around teenagers is not merely a result of the market deciding upon the interests of viewers, but a response to the unfulfillment in their lives, whether they're teenagers, young adults, or possibly older. In Japan, the workplace is unforgiving. School life robs students of a precious time in their lives. So at least for those fleeting few hours of free time they get at the end of the day, they get to see some other version of their youth that feels happier, more exciting, and filled with the kind of things that they missed out on. Your childhood and teenage years are a time for learning, but freedom and fun is also important. Many countries around the world have adopted shorter school days with more breaks during them, recognizing that education is best delivered in smaller, less overwhelming amounts and allowing for more free time. Some of these countries include Finland, Denmark, Sweden, Belgium, and the Netherlands, all of which frequently share the top spots in the Global Happiness Index and have persistently high end-of-year scores among their students. Japan is a country that's, for lack of a better term, stuck in its ways. Some people might like to claim that, as a foreigner, outsiders have no right to judge how they do things. I've done a few videos on Japan, and it's something that I've heard numerous times, along with claims that criticism of another culture is tantamount to racism. Personally, I don't subscribe to this idea, and I ultimately believe it's a harmful deflection to protect a culture which many romanticize through the lens of the media that it produces. If a culture is harming human beings, then it's doing something wrong, and no arguments of it's just how they do things will suffice. It's just like how you should be able to criticize a country such as Saudi Arabia for its treatment of women, America for its treatment of non-whites, or the UK for making James Corden famous. Sorry about that, it was out of my hands. Anime and manga presents us with various forms of fantasies to cater to the desires of audiences, but there's something in particular that I think is deserving of further exploration, the romance genre. Romance and dating in anime is represented across different shows, but mostly in similar ways. These shows mostly have straight male protagonists in high school who, like in other genres, are unremarkable in social standing and stature. These stories usually swing between comedic and dramatic, with a substantial amount of will-they-won't-they they, between a potential romantic partners, and near the end, after an excruciating 20-ish episodes, they inevitably confess their feelings entering into a relationship, and the fact that it's something that happens at the very end is worth exploring. But we'll return to that. If we're being honest, these romance stories tend to follow the same format, but they can at least nonetheless be enjoyable. There's some tender moments, playful misunderstandings, tension, innuendo, and conflict. It's also common to see a turning point in the story in which the male protagonist is presented with another potential love interest, usually with a different personality type from the main romantic interest, like they could be more timid, caring, or boisterous. Basically, anything picked from the glossary of anime personality types. The reward for the audience at the end of these stories is to see a relationship between the main characters finally become a reality, albeit for a short amount of time. There's something compelling about watching two people eventually find each other, even outside of anime. The Office made people care about Jim and Pam, Friends had Ross and Rachel, Cheers had Sam and Diane, so on and so forth. 
However, it's all too often the case that romance stories in anime neglect to include representations of what it's like to actually be in a relationship, something which, if done right, I believe could help audiences gain some insight into what it's like to maintain a healthy love life. Allow me to explain. For the past few years in Japan, there has been a decline in the amount of people in relationships and a growing disinterest in dating among young people. According to the White Paper on Gender Equality 2022, conducted by Japan's Cabinet Office in 2021, it was revealed that 65.8% of men and 51.8% of women in their 20s weren't in a long-term relationship or married. It was also revealed that 39.8% of men and 25.1% of women in their 20s had never been on a date since high school and that 34.1% of men and 21.5% of women in their 30s hadn't either. So are people in Japan just not interested in love? Not really, but kind of. I mean, they're still writing stories and songs about love that are very popular, but we once again have to take into consideration the current lifestyle of young citizens in Japan. Long work hours, terrible pay, and a lack of social mobility make the prospect of dedicating the necessary amount of time on a relationship practically unsustainable. There's also the conflict between genders. Young women have begun embracing a life of independence where they can focus on enjoying their freedom thanks to being self-reliant and work on personal and career development. Many men, on the other hand, still want a more traditional relationship where their wife is a homemaker who forgoes a career to take care of their husband and child. Due to these factors, for the past few years, Japan has famously had a low birth rate, leading to a shrinking population and a potential crisis in which the country's rapidly growing elderly population will be left without adequate care. And to give you some idea of how dire it is right now, adult diapers have been outselling infant diapers for the past few years. So where does anime fit into all of this? Well, in general, anime doesn't do a great job of offering audiences an intimate and insightful look at relationships between people. When relationships aren't being heavily dramatized, they're just being left out of these stories. As I already mentioned, many romance stories seen in anime end with a couple finally entering a relationship and the relationship itself isn't given much in the way of exploration. Anime isn't the only medium guilty of this, but it's definitely a big offender. The thing is, media may cater to our fantasies, but it can also provide us with a way to understand human experiences better. By showing audiences well-realized characters in situations in which people can empathize with, it can educate those of you who have yet to be in a relationship and gain a better understanding of what it means to share your life with another person, along with the joys and perils that come with it. A cute back and forth between two naive teenagers who are falling in love for the first time might be endearing to watch, but it doesn't offer much in the way of experience. In fact, given how long it takes for relationships to come to fruition in these stories and the amount of hurdles that they have to jump over to get to that point, I imagine the prospect of falling in love can end up feeling pretty anxiety-inducing. Of course, the idea of watching a show where a couple argues over something like bedsheet colours isn't exactly an easy sell. I'd probably watch it though. But there are probably ways to illustrate what it means to be in a relationship in a more fantastical way. Maybe the industry needs to enlist more people with a more intimate knowledge of relationships. But given how demanding the work schedule is for anime and manga creators, I can't imagine many of them have had those experiences. So I guess if we want these stories, then I suppose the industry itself needs an overhaul. Good luck with that. <laughs> If I were to recommend an anime that does have a positive and healthy story about a relationship though, you should check out My Love Story, with two exclamation points, where the unconventional main character Takio, who's somehow 15, starts dating a girl called Yamato, which he saves from a subway groper, and following that they both discover the joys of young love. It's super charming, very funny, and although it's not the most realistic representation of relationships in an anime, it's refreshing to see. Also, Takio is, is just the best. Like, he's a goofy ox with a heart of gold, he's got a friendship with a guy called Suna that we'd all be lucky to have. He's just great. Like, this, this is a pro-Takio household. Oops. Outside of the romance genre, Neon Genesis Evangelion is great, if 
a little darker. It has a great exploration of childhood trauma. It sort of baits you with the lighter tones of the early episodes, then gets into some deep psychological themes in its second half, all while looking at the more complicated and sometimes lurid elements of human nature. Sorry that I can't show clips. Studio Kara and I have some history. Oh, and recently I watched Mob Psycho 100, which was fantastic, especially if you want something that's a little more action-based. It's a show about a teenage with extraordinary superpowers who's also trying to navigate school life, but it's so much more than that. Mob doesn't want these powers and hates that when he feels emotional extremes, they become uncontrollable, resulting in him feeling alienated and heartbroken when he hurts someone. He's a kind-hearted kid who just wants to be liked and recognized for who he is and not his powers. The show's message is that even if you're a regular person, you still have a tremendous amount of value to others and that you'll discover that if you put yourself out there. Mob may be an outsider, but he tries so hard to better himself, not through his powers, but through simple human things like socializing despite his shyness and exercising despite his physical shortcomings. Genuinely wonderful, inspiring stuff. Oh, and his boss Reagan is the only good Reagan to ever exist. And he's fictional. Welcome to Solari's Watch Mojo top whatever list of anime, uh, brought to you by this episode's sponsor, Milk, I guess. This isn't milk. So yeah, don't take this as me saying all anime bad, because there's some legitimately good stuff out there if you're willing to come through these swaths of shows that follow the same formulas, or whatever flavor of the week is being currently raved about on social media, like it's up there with Akira or Grave and the Fireflies. Audiences grow up at some point, and now there are people who started watching anime in their teens that are now over 40, but what they see, both new and old, are still about people who've yet to experience adulthood. Yes, there is a decent amount of anime and manga out there that's based around a cast of adult characters, but I think it would be helpful, and in some cases more interesting, if we had more stories crafted around the experiences of being an adult. Stories about work life, the difficulties of finding friends and love, the pressure of trying to meet society's expectations, or the pressure to look after your elders, who simultaneously try to guide your life in a direction that you might not want, or even just stories about the fun part of being an adult. Adulthood is complicated, and there's a lot to be said about it, way more than our teenage years. And hey, if you know any good anime or manga about adulthood, then by all means feel free to share it in the comments, I'm always open to suggestions. One more recent anime that tackled adulthood was Agretzko, a show about a woman in her mid-twenties working at an office job while trying to do all the things that adults are expected to do, like find success and land a good husband. Due to the expectations of her gender though, she finds herself having to remain passive and avoid conflict, so she expresses her anger at this through none other than singing death metal at a karaoke room. The show is genuinely great, but despite its cutesy exterior, it gets brutally honest at times about loneliness, depression, acceptance, and so on, to the point that many Japanese people claim that they can't watch it because of how real it feels to them. Give it a try, it's really good. F*** this guy though. Stories based during our teenage years are, at their core, nostalgia. They allow us to reflect upon a simpler time in our lives or envision an idealized scenario that we never got. Things like, what if I dated the most popular girl in school? What if people recognized my potential? What if I was popular? What if I was more important? What if I had more friends? And so on and so forth. Anime isn't the only form of media that invokes these feelings. It just does it in different ways compared to, say, the West, where our nostalgia tends to be far more overt by telling stories that take place in the past or by reviving old franchises to revisit a time in our lives where things were unequivocally easier. Clearly, Japan has greater problems than just anime. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not such a huge deal. But... I'm also a firm believer in the power of media and how it can influence how we see ourselves and the world around us. 
Stories are a wonderful gateway to expanding our understanding. And although it might be comfortable to revisit or re-envision the times in our lives where the world felt like a kinder place, it doesn't do much to help us grow as adults. If anything, I think it kind of serves as a cruel reminder of how reality and the present kind of sucks. If the stories told through anime, manga, or other kind of media from any part of the world can do something to allay our fear of loving someone or the future, then it can help make our present more tolerable. Adulthood may be miserable at times, to the point of being unbearable. I've lost track of how many times I wish I could go back and take a second shot at being a teenager, even if I was a dumbass who wrote painfully awful song lyrics, drew equally awful art, and tried to look like the rejected member of an indie band. Might I remind you, this was a choice. My hair was pretty nice though, right? It's not always a terrible thing to look at the past with rose-tinted glasses, but it is important to embrace our present reality, to consider how we can make things better for ourselves and hopefully other people, and be able to enjoy stories where we can currently sympathize without feeling too much pain, because there is something to be gained from stories about our reality. Might I recommend the show Severance for one? Really good. There will always be a place for stories that take place during the springtime of our life, but eventually, the world outside of the classroom will call for all of us. So maybe it's time for our stories and us to graduate. Thank you very much for watching. I always enjoy exploring aspects of Japanese culture and this was something that's always interested me. I'm going to be making similar videos in the near future, so if you'd like to see that, then be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be the first to know about new releases. I'd like to give a big thank you to Liberty Anyanaga for her help with this video. As someone who was a resident of Japan with ties to the industry, her input was incredibly valuable and helped make this video way better than I was expecting. I'd also like to thank Birdie Blake for their fantastic anime-fied depiction of me in the thumbnail. Thanks to them for the first time in my life, I feel handsome. They're a damn good artist and writer, so if you'd like to check out their work or even ask for a commission, you can find their link tree in the description. Thanks to all the patrons who support the channel that you can see on screen, and I'd like to give a special thank you to the following. Joker D. Black, Liana, Syndrome Noir, JP, Minty, Infernal Ramblings, Malcontent, Jacob Mayer, Zoe B, J. Miz, Mech, Elizren, Beige Circle, Jonathan Morris, Aria Rose, Caro Schultz, Bailey Greveling, Catherine Pandel, Candide, Dan McCrary, Remy Allen, Grants B, Enrique Gutierrez, Murgurger Fashionable, Alina, R. Atoms, Games, Sharfay, Sparrow Wagon, N. D. Bagel, Dylan Wierasing, Ruby O'Connor, Tadeo De Oria, Ryan Osterman, Liberty Anyanaga, Jay, Catherine, Patrick McBain, Gina I, Henry the Longshot, Lizzie Peasy, King Me, Fishcatch, The Paltism, Haplo, Tanda, Gertz Weinreich, Best Friends Gang.tv, Charlie, Chris Smothers, Locked In, Kev Yu, Lucky Number Devon, and Matthew Torres. Thank you all so very much. Your support really does make a difference. As I said in my last video, YouTube revenue has been down recently and my wife's had some ongoing health problems which have been costly to deal with. So if you can afford to support us, then it would be greatly appreciated. If you want support in a non-monetary fashion though, then you can do so by liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that typical YouTube stuff. The dog you're seeing right now was my wonderful Bichon Frise, Evie, who sadly passed away recently at the age of 15. Unfortunately, I was unable to be with her in her last days due to living overseas, but she went peacefully. She was a good girl until the end, and she will be dearly missed. Love you, Evie. Thank you once again for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Alright, here's your cat, Mercury. Be cute, Curie. The algorithm hates me, so I need engagement. Yes, I do. Yes, I do.